Hi everyone, welcome to week four. Week one, we made websites. Week two, we made menus. Uh, if you're a graphic designer, you picked categories like identity systems, typography, branding, packaging, posters, and so on. Um, so those were basically blank pages, but you had your menu set up. Week three, we photographed our work. So hopefully you've put those images on the pages. So now those pages have images, but no text. We're gonna add those in the future. Uh, this week, week four, we take pictures of our, we can turn the camera around this time, take pictures of ourselves. Um, those pictures will be used on your about page, your contact page, and possibly on your homepage if you like. Um, we take two pictures or two types of pictures, a headshot, and an environmental portrait. Uh, the headshot is exactly what it sounds like. It's a picture of your head. <laughs> it's very useful. And also another awesome picture is we're gonna zoom out, open up a ways, and take pictures of, um, uh, take environmental portraits, uh, pictures of us in our environment, pictures of us with our art tools. Uh, so the headshot is useful because there will be a lot of places where your picture is just going to be really tiny and if you have anything uh, wider than a headshot you're just going to be a couple of pixels and nobody can really see anything. So the headshot is really useful for example if you're speaking. Um, there'll be a paper flyer and or a website or an email blast that has um, you know, a picture of you and then some info about what you're talking about. And let me say that I encourage you to find speaking opportunities, super valuable way to network and connect. Now, I'm sure you've, you know, been in person or seen online, you know, talks at giant conferences where people with decades of experience talk about what it's like to be the CEO of Pixar, stuff like that. And you're thinking like, well, how am I gonna do that? Well, you're probably not in 2021 but there are all kinds of speaking opportunities. Even if you live in a huge city like Los Angeles or Long Beach, they're surrounded by little tiny cities and all those little tiny cities have a chamber of commerce that meets every month. Um, face to face before the pandemic, I'm not sure what's happening now. Um, some of them maybe aren't meeting, but I bet a bunch of them are having Zoom meetings. And every month they need some kind of speaker to talk about something. Uh, these are priceless opportunities because you may be giving a talk that teaches them how to do something, but what you're really doing is selling them that you can do that thing for them. So, you know, if, if you give the Chamber of Commerce of Lakewood or some city near Long Beach a talk on, you know, branding your business or, you know, identity systems that, that you know, sell your services, what you're really doing is showing them that you know what to do. You're teaching them how to talk to their designer and you're proving that that designer might wanna be you because you know how to do all this stuff. So seize these opportunities. Even though you're just graduating, they, they are out there. People need speakers for these kinds of groups all the time. And it's a great chance for you to teach a little bit, but really just to present your abilities to a group of people that could need them now or in the future. So, for that kind of thing, a headshot is fantastic because it needs to be tight because it's just going to be a little one-inch picture of you on the paper brochure, the email blast, the website. Uh, that picture proves that you're human, yay! But what it doesn't do is tell us very much about you beyond the fact that you're human. So the environmental portrait, we're going to widen out and we're going to see you in your environment so we're going to see uh, a, a sculptor or a welder with their you know the, their welding tools uh you know maybe their their leather protective equipment and you know gas tanks and all this kind of you know intense cool stuff or if you're a watercolor painter you know we'll see you with your delicate watercolors and and you know all your, your table where you work and so on um so these are ways to present you, your tools, your environment, the way you work. Really a nice opportunity uh, in these photos. Um, I really encourage you for the headshot and the environmental portrait both 
not to just wait till Sunday night and then scroll through your phone and find you know some really crappy photo of yourself at a party with all kinds of junk in the background and it's contrasty and it's grainy and it's terrible I mean these photos are you shaking your potential or future clients hands it'd be like going to an interview and you shake their hand with your hand is covered with peanut butter or snot or something it's like you know present a nice hand to them uh, you're not taking these pictures to feel some need that Glenn has you're taking these to present yourself to the world to build your career so schedule a little time this week and try to create a couple great images um, for the you know maybe two of you who have nice DSLR or mirrorless cameras that's awesome they will take better pictures however um, a nice camera with crappy lighting and an ugly background that's a worse picture than a cell phone with good lighting and a good background so cell phones are great if that's what you have that's awesome if you have a friend or a relative who has a better camera maybe you can use that but cell phones are pretty good um, lighting you know pay attention to it is, is number one if you're just indoors and it's it's just kind of muddy flat light it's gonna be this muddy flat picture um, try to find something a little uh, snappier um, one really great type of light is called window light uh, where you literally sit next to a window and so the Sun is not hitting you directly but it's coming in from outdoors in a diffuse way provides nice light so the side of your face that's facing the window will be brighter this side will be darker might be a little bit too contrasty so if you have you know a uh, baby brother or sister in the house maybe they can hold a piece of white foam core on the other side to fill in the side of your face it won't be as bright but the the contrast from light to dark will be lower which is good um, you can also you know use any lights you have if there's a off chance that you have studio lights that's great but for most of you again you know maybe it'll just be lamps that you have at home or something um, but let those lamps um, illuminate your face you know move it around and see how it how it works and try to get something where it's not completely flat lighting but it's not super contrasty either where one side of your face is a little brighter the other side's a little dimmer but not way out um, for headshots just a neutral background a wall or something and then again for environmental portraits it'll be you and your environment realistically you know many of you are going to have you know maybe you're living at home you have a small desk in your bedroom shoved up against the wall um, if you have an opportunity to take a picture somewhere else that would be great uh, if not maybe you can pull the desk away from the wall and move the camera behind that so it shoots across the desk at you with some other stuff out of focus if possible in the background um, again if you have a nice camera DSLR mirrorless it'll you can you can use a large aperture and make the background out of focus if you have a fancy phone it'll have portrait mode which doesn't always work but sometimes works really well you could try it and if you have neither then you know just do what you can um, but if, if it can be not you at a desk shoved up against a wall that might be a little bit stronger image uh, to present yourself the pandemic again is kind of limiting but as I'm sure you know your generation particularly say like a graphic designer might go to a co-working space literally a co-working space or you know a coffee shop like Starbucks or Blue Bottle or one of those places um, so if it wasn't the pandemic I'd say go sit there and take a picture of yourself with other coffee drinkers preferably a little bit out of focus in the background um, there was also a question at, right at the end today about well backgrounds which I kind of discussed there um, and also photographing sculpture so you know depending on the, the nature of the pieces you might want to if, if there's different kinds of detail you might want to photograph your sculpture from different angles um, you might want to photograph close and far you might want to show some fine texture or work in the piece depending on again the nature of the piece but probably 
you know, even a painting, you would probably want more than one picture because you'd want to see the whole painting and then you'd want to see detail, a small area, brush texture, and so on. Um, and for a sculpture, probably even more um, to see the piece from different angles, to see texture, etc. cetera. Um, if it's functional work, then just like last week's example of the salsa label that you designed, where I said, you know, glue that label on a, on a jar of salsa, maybe, add, maybe actually art direct the thing, add a bowl of chips, a bowl of salsa. Ultimately, your mission isn't to prove that you can make a rectangle in Illustrator. Your mission is to communicate to your client that you can communicate to their clients uh, that their product is desirable, that, that I want to eat their salsa. So, you know, the more complete your image is um, at presenting this salsa uh, and making me hungry, the more successful you are and the more easily your potential client can understand that. So if your art, if your uh, sculpture, your ceramics, let's just say, happen to be functional, then similarly try to take pictures that show people interacting with the work. If your work is purely aesthetic, if it's going to be in a gallery or it's conceptual work, then you may photograph it with a more simple background. But again, I mean, just pay attention, you know, take a picture and look at it and, and what do you think? Um, uh, oh, this background's kind of busy. Can I find something simple and neutral to, instead? Or conversely, um, oh, it's kind of stark and it feels kind of stiff. Maybe I could just find like a f area of grass and I can put this ceramic object on the grass so that instead of being against whiteness, which kind of feels wrong to me, uh, we can have a little bit of an organic uh, space for the piece to be experienced in, um, but it's not overly busy. I still can let my audience experience the piece. So I hope that helps. Um, shoot me an email, jump on Discord. I can uh, talk with you about any of this stuff or anything else by email or on Discord, or if I can certainly hop on a Zoom call and we can, uh, we can talk video face to video face if you like. Um, but that's our mission this week. Two pictures, headshot, environmental portrait, and then stick them on your about page, your contact page, and optionally if you like your home page. Good luck. Uh, hope all goes well. Shout if I can help. See you next Monday.